trying to block the plant light from behind me. Stella's snoring. Um, man, I did sleep so much better last night. But still, being out like we went for two walks yesterday. She's really into the walking thing now. Boy, she wants to just go, go, go. She wants adventure. She wants to meet people. Like, she's just something else, that girl. Um, so, um, when we went, I... Uh, I, there was definitely, and it didn't even seem like I really smelled anything. And it was like over by the river, but I definitely felt like drugged feeling. And I just like, but I'm getting used to it. I swear to God, I keep thinking it. it's got to be like, I don't know, they spray lithium on us or something and a uh, mood stabilizer or something. I don't know. Is it whatever it is, it makes me really tired. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just certain people are affected by it. I don't know, but. I get so tired where I just can't stay awake. And it's been going on for a couple of years where it will be, you know, you just be per perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden it's like, you just can't stay awake. And, uh, and then I kept thinking maybe it was just me, you know, but then one day I was talking to my mom and she was saying it without happening to her. And I'm saying, I swear to God, I think they spray something on us that causes it. And I was talking about that a couple of years ago. But right now, do all this talk about like the trans agenda, like the what's really going on, and so that's all coming to the surface. That uh, you know, I was talking about that when I very first started with the, the whole thing. Like to me, that was so crystal clear what they were doing, and uh, so yesterday on the walk by the river. They did clarify it to me. They just pop in and it just all of a sudden was like, oh, okay. Now I get exactly what you're saying. And so, and this was like a few different ways they presented it, but it really sunk in when they said it this way. And so it may have already sunk in by other things that I've said before, where somebody already sees it on the same way. But, um, so what they were saying is that the 3D is where you work out the pain and the struggle and stuff. That's where you work that stuff out. The, that's what pain is for. Pain is to, uh, like what I was saying yesterday about pain like grounds you into the experience or something. And it was something that they had shown me at different times too when I would ask something about like was Stella going through all that pain and her, uh, what she was going through. And that is when, you know, they showed me like she was a, a predator before. And this is a learning for her. She's learning about pain and stuff. It's just like it's an advancement for her soul. And I can see so much, like, uh, especially when we go to the river, it is, or the lake, any of the places where I take her around water, she turns into a hippo. It is the cutest thing. Um, and then uh, I see this big cat in her all the time, and she goes and stalks around. That part of her cracks me up. And then plus, sometimes she makes sounds that sound more like a big cat than they do a dog. And she makes uh, these growls and stuff that are... Yeah, just all sorts of things where you start, like, I can recognize different animals in her. I definitely think she's been a cow for sure. She really likes grazing. She takes it very serious. And um, so, anyways, uh, you know, that was just something that they had shown me about when I was like, why with the pain? And then even with my own, when I'd be like, what is the hell? Why can't, you know, why is this not healing or whatever, you know, because going through this stuff with my eyes, a lot of stuff, because I'll focus on just healing myself. And then I felt like I was hitting into blocks and stuff. And I would question and then they, you know, tell me it's like for a purpose, that the pain has a purpose. And it is, um, I can't remember exactly how then how I explained it. I know I talked about it. But it, it was more about grounding into the experience. But so yesterday, though, how they showed me. So it's it's a part of grounding into the experience. But it is, uh, it's because you need to heal the things. And so you need the playground to do it. And so the three-dimensional gives you that space to go in and, uh, you know, live these experiences out so that you can process them 
and you develop because it's a development of self, but you, there's parts of you as you develop that you have to release. And then there's the, the lessons that are there to teach you create trauma and pain in the vessel. And so then you are not just the vessel it is uh, into your core. It is into your, your structure, the core of you, your DNA, the being of you. And so uh, it will take that in. And then uh, in the vessel being the avatar, the, the human experience. And so in this thing, how it is, is so, because right now we're doing this change where we're going into the, the age of Aquarius. And I've talked about this a lot of times and like we're in this bridge part and this bridge part is dark. So you don't get to know all the things and you have to have trust that you are sure you have to see the light at the end of the tunnel to be looking forward. And, and you can see like, uh, you know, fear will prevent that. I, I had somebody yesterday on my videos on TikTok and I said something about, um, I don't know. Sometimes I just will put something in my head. Like I'll see something and I'll just put it in and it'll just, just be like a, a rant or something. But it is, um, I don't remember what I was talking about yesterday. It's like, a, it's usually like as, as a subject for the day or something. I don't remember what it was. But it, um, this person came and said something about like that they needed to, they were scared. Um, I, th I think they were saying they were scared to stop paying their bills. They were scared to, you know, take the next step into the thing. And I said, that's fear right there. That is, I mean, that is fear holding you back. That's what people got to see the fear that they have inside themselves. It's not fear out there. It's the fear in here. That's the fear you're working on. And so they trick you into thinking like your bills won't be paid. You have these structured bills, this structured calendar, all this. And they, they trick you into thinking that you have to stay on top of it. You have to do all this. But when you stop, that's programming. And then when you step back from that and you start releasing that and you go into universal trust and knowing, you know, and that is one thing too. Is like when I have gone out and got things and stuff, they tell me like that is a part of moving into trust. Like if you're always like, no, I got to save that. Oh, I got to hold on to that. And I'm not saying you don't hold on to anything. Um, I mean, I think a nest egg is, you know, having your safety or something, you know, is um, what most people want to have. And I, there's a, there's a gray, there's a shade in there, the gray of uh, greed and gluttony. And so it, it just is where you get yourself to where you feel comfortable and I bet your ass you've got lessons in it, but it's your lessons. So you don't try and do it to somebody else it is your lessons about uh, your money, your relationship to it, but there's more than that because it has to do with how people interact and stuff. And so there's lessons behind all these things. And so, um, but it is each person has to find their shape, their, their place in that gray zone of their own balance. And, and then the experience can change the balance. It can realign or readjust, but the experience is still so that you have the repercussions, the consequences, so that you can expand yourselves by seeing. And most things are like you run into roadblocks. Oh, this leads to this, this leads to this. Because everything has uh, two sides and everything is just like fantastic. And so um, everything has the... Um, going into all of the different things that um it's like it just has to do with the learning or the lessons or something it's not like there's one true thing one perfect thing the one thing that will work all things have things to learn and so it is uh it is like uh living all these different lives and stuff is like filling your pockets with jewels and um, you know, it's, it's real and it's solid and it is, uh, your memory it is your conditioning. It is the development of the true self 
through the mass amount of experiences. But so what, what they were telling me though, is that, so when you were trying to cross through this bridge and you were headed, like so many people have their own things. Some can't see the light. Some are only looking down. Some are only looking behind them. Some are, everybody has their own view of what they are looking at. And it can be a part of their process. It isn't all wrong to be looking back if you're healing what you're looking at. And, or if you're just replaying it and keeping yourself in trauma, that is a dysfunction that you got to learn to control yourself. But if you are focused and you are using your time productively, then you are healing. And so it is a, a proper tool to look back is if you're using it as a tool to heal, to move you forward. But in this process to cross across this bridge and it, it, you can't get through the gates because it, there is like, it's gated. It's like a gated community. And if you're carrying all this baggage and all of these lies, all this garbage that you've re refused to release, you can't get through the gates. You have the, the gate, all the garbage has to be um it has to be let go of crossing the bridge you have to let go of the baggage because you can't enter carrying all the junk and the place that you have to do it is in the 3d so it isn't like the people are going to split off and they are um you know like negative or something that's why I kept saying it's like there's so many people I see out there who are not awakened who think that they are but they aren't doing the work and if you're awake and you're truly awakened as a conscious being and you really are as a spiritual uh influence over your your uh, daily living your lifestyle your outlook your uh, your uh uh, uh the way you uh, visualize your life and how you experience it, if it comes through that uh, looking through your heart and being a deeper thinker, not reactive, but pulling through your heart to look at things, then you can see in a more heartfelt way, a deep, deeper way. And in order to get there, see, you have to heal things. You can't feel compassion and and love and consideration for others when you're carrying your own pain and trauma man this is emotional fuck this isn't even like a, a picture i don't even know how to explain this but fuck uh um so it is uh so it's not being held back but it's being held back because you can't move forward you have to uh, finish what you're doing you can't you can't ascend and move out of this space if you're holding on to these things and like in the visuals and stuff where they've showed me like when I would release things and I would feel lighter and then I would hear people talking about like your vibration and stuff I was like oh well that's raising your vibration I feel lighter like I literally feel lighter I don't feel heavy I don't feel like when they talk about think about like through time when people would talk about um uh, like a chip on their shoulder you know oh that person's got a real chip on their shoulder and that person there you know oh well, come in unpack your uh i what was that your this is a, like a trend i swear to god it was said a lot in the 80s or 90s about uh, baggage people carrying baggage to their relationships all of a sudden it became about baggage and you know, people counting the bags and what's in your baggage and all the garbage that you unload on other people when you're carrying your baggage around. And so that has been things that we as humans have been able to see has been in our awareness as part of the awakening as these different experiences, these different opportunities that each person has throughout their lifetime so that they have these different things to give an opportunity to see things differently. But not everybody can see things differently because sometimes the voices outside that they're focused on are the voices in here are too loud and they can't hear. And so that is why they have to break down the, 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 um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, a, a I don't know, I can see like a garbage and a recycle and like, you have to get rid of all the stuff to start new. 
you can't take you can't take the old stuff and and start new that's not starting new that's just carrying on the old stuff so you have to let go of the old stuff and um but uh, the thing that is going to be drastic dramatic is what i think is when this uh, this occurrence happens and, and it's so mind-boggling too because there's so many videos where these people talk about these fucking billionaires in this goddamn fucking submarine like and that is a fuck i mean it's such a ridiculous thing even when they were sitting there showing you know the the uh remote thing that moves it and they're sealed in it and they only have so amount of air and all of it. it's all just it's, it's such a movie and uh, but the thing is, the part that gets me is how much people will focus on that and talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. And there is so much other shit going on that is real, that is really affecting people. Tulsa, there's lots of people dying. There's people begging for help. Uh, the temperatures are hot. People are having heat exhaustion. And that's and you know their governor is in paris having a good time so that's the absurdity and see that's why i said i don't know you know what tulsa or oklahoma has to heal I mean, there's been a lot of trauma and stuff that has gone on this planet for a long time so it is each person in your environment to go in harmony with nature to not judge it to not become angry to go into the harmonious healing that it is trying to occur on the planet and so when you go into harmony you're not going to be as affected as the people who are trying to fight against it that is they're trying to fight it's like they're trying to hit against the the firmament they're trying to hit against this energy they're trying to cross over which by the way i guess now legally they can't say it's the globe or the flat earth i i think that it's neither but i think it might be now that legally they have to say it's the flat earth because they can't prove the globe or something but it's all um you know what well, we're going to find out here soon is all just uh realms and uh, reality we're just like on this little place right here and we're in a bubble and it, it was a containment and I, I i was curious about this even uh thinking about like uh, the souls that come in um they came in to do the reincarn you know to do the cycle here to do this you know earth university or whatever to come to go through these experiences that you could have here and then they got so caught up and then the, the reincarnation recycle there's a whole thing about that when they would leave how they would be in that realm and redirect them back and so you know i don't know about all that but there's a lot of people here who feel forced and so um as because to me um my incarnating here was it during different period of time or something and it isn't like I don't feel like I was like just here or something I don't know it's hard because uh like you have a bunch of parts of you that's everywhere so but I um I don't know I don't feel I never have felt caught up in this place and so I mean there's certain things that I found interesting but it wasn't like I was like caught up like what I'm seeing with people. And so um, that makes me think like if there was this programming that they haven't been able to break. And so they haven't been able to get out of this cycle here. And so if there really was so many souls that came here to try and just come in like this and bring um, thought bring instead of like out there when they're trying to communicate they're trying to you know put thought bubbles into your head they're trying to give you thoughts they're trying to give energy not sit there and force them in or something but it's telepathy and there is a direction and this containment and so the directing of the energy of the telepathy to you give guidance and so and, uh, and the more programming that happened the more people got cut off from their soul the more interference in their in their uh, wi-fi system towards their direct uh their higher self or something and so then all of these people had to come out to come in to the game to start saying the stuff 
directly so it would have more of a um, an impact. The thing though that trips me out is like, uh, I know it's going to change, but the censoring us from being able to speak, where I hear people who say weird stuff, all get to speak all the time. And so, but I know everything has to do with timing. That is just, you know, my own ego of like, oh my God, in my own frustration of Groundhog Day, of doing the same thing day after day after day after day, but um, with no, you know, no give, no change. So, um, uh, what was I going to say? <sighs> the, um, the, um, the give, um, so the p uh the okay so the people because I get the uh, the things I hear that people saying it just feels like they are so trapped in their their thinking process of how they view things or what they can't see or something and you know I'm always trying to figure out like what in the hell like I was always thought it was weird when I was younger but then as I've gotten older I I, I mean. There was a period of time where I just tried to fit in, I feel like, but it's still, it was 2020 when I really started seeing like, oh my gosh, people are really this different. Like they really look at things this differently and see things this differently. And um, so I was thinking, uh, you know, and I'll try and figure it out. And so I was thinking it must be that reincarnation recycle thing and then that we have come in to bring in this other information but the programming is very difficult but so all these different people even though they all these people think they're awake like if tons and tons of religious ones tons of spiritual ones oh my god tons of ones that are claiming themselves to be spiritual and um and then tons that just don't have any clue of anything going on you know uh and then so many of these religious people are every goddamn thing. Now, uh, this just kind of irritated me because there was a big trend now all of a sudden where they're going off on the MAGAs really means the king of Satan or some bullshit thing. It's like it has to do with magnetism. It has to do with energy. It has to do with quantum where we're headed towards. And it, it isn't about Satan. They, you know, I, I don't understand how these people's minds work. Like everything is the devil and Satan and oh my Lord have mercy. So, um, uh, so I, I, people came in to try and help people to see that that's not true to remind them because they got stuck in here and they can't remember. Like, I, I don't know. I, you know, all I can say is that when this happens, this pole shift situation the energetic shift of things going the other way. It's like um, the pole shift. You can imagine it as the the pendulum. The pendulum swings out and then it swings back. And so it has swung out. And we've seen how uh, far it's gone, how sick people were willing to go. And, uh, and it's even still, you know, being shown to us. And it's, uh, you know, it's mind boggling. No wonder we are all disgusted and sad and miserable and lonely and stuff. This world was sick and diseased. And so many people around us were sick and diseased and trying to hide and mask. There's still people even who are awakened, who still even are claiming they're masking to the people who they know are asleep instead of claiming their uh, authority over themselves and their own authenticity and being comfortable with being their own soul with dignity and instead they uh, hide and they mask because they don't want the repercussions you know I feel fortunate when I had certain people stop talking to me so I could see that I needed to be true to myself not hide any part of myself and that is a very valuable lesson so there is going to be, um, when this happens, and, and this is why I've said there's going to really impact a lot of people who have held on to like, you know, just follow what this person says. Oh yeah. Because some of these accounts are going up. They're going up. So it is like, ah, man, yeah, 
So the, the pendulum is a pulling, pulling, and it is going to swing back. And it is already, the energy is already going the other direction. But it still has this, uh, you know, I don't know, is it cuts through and exposes. And all the exposing is so everyone can see what's in their bags. Because there's no way to cross through the bridge to get into the new age carrying all that baggage. The only place to work out that baggage is in the 3D. You have to leave the density, the heaviness. That is, that is what binds you to the 3D is carrying the pain. The pain and suffering is what holds you there. Because you have to look at it through that lens in order to see. You have to hold on to that experience or that problem or that example that brought up the the thing that you're carrying and that can only replay there unless you use it in your healing when you heal it you can play it out differently but as long as you are reliving it and holding on to it it has nowhere to go it, it, you have to relieve it release it in the 3d experience and so it is I don't, I, I mean, it's just something is like how they've shown me and stuff. And that has been like one of the things that has been so, from the time I started my healing, it was as soon as I got through my dark night, the dark night, you know, going through the thing and you go through all the loss and then you go sink into the depth of hell of your, your inner self and you uh, sink into the tragic aspect of self. And once you bring yourself out of there by the grit, you know, you're holding on to every little thing you can to pull yourself out of it because it's a deep hole and everybody's got their own depth, you know, and everybody is going to go through it differently. And uh, once you pull yourself free out of there, um, you know, then it, 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 to me, I was always in communication with my guides. And so they would tell me, you know, when I'd be going through something and I'd be like, what in the hell is going on? And they would be telling me, you know, well, you didn't have boundaries. Well, you weren't in balance. Is that you got, you got to learn to protect yourself. You got to come into balance. You can't just be over here. Someone home, take care of me. You've got to pull in to be able to take care of yourself. And so they would tell me these things. And then I would look at the experience. And I'd be like, oh, okay. So now I see what I'm supposed to be learning here. And you approach it in that way. And so you're learning. So I was being effective through my healing. But they were telling me from the beginning that um, this was going to go mass. That this was going to be a, this huge thing. And I, and I kept referring to it as a come to Jesus moments. And they were showing me that everybody was going to go through what I was going through. And that the um, I still didn't know that I was going to be talking about it or trying to help people. I don't remember when that was because even when, um, I mean, I had to get to a lot of healing a lot of healing to get to the point of being able to just come on and expose myself and be true to myself and not be concerned what other people thought of me. And, um, you know, that took a lot of healing to get there. And so that's why I'm just like when these people just like, Oh, just woke up and just jump right in. Like here I am. I'm going to lead you all through this journey. It's like, you know, it's, uh, it's big thing you know it's a long journey it's a and a, when people are in their ego doing it are they really going into their core a lot of people they go off the internet all of a sudden and they come back and they're like well you know I didn't really want to talk for a couple of days I was really going through some stuff so you know but you know and then they go right back into their same you know you know spiritual stuff it's like uh it's about the healing it's not about, you know, what you wore that day when you told everybody that the submarine was in the water and they couldn't be found. You know, it's like, it has to do with people healing, not focusing on stuff that doesn't matter, not focusing on things that have no influence over their life and recognizing what does and recognizing. Um, and that is all part of the building community and stuff is that aspect of uh, self of becoming a part of something and so is a part of the transition in to um one's own self-identity 
in is that, you know, when I was asking my kids, because to me, I kept thinking like, I know things are going to be changing in my life. And I know, um, you know, I know the direction that I'm headed. This is the thing too, is, it is kind of like, um, think about it like a sailboat. Like you are directing the energy. You, you are turning your sails towards your, uh, to me, it's, um, destiny as that's the level that I understand things. That's what they show me and tell me. And so I have to be comfortable to move in, in, uh, and have faith to follow wh what they tell me in the direction to go and what to do. And, and then, you know, and they talk to me along the way. They don't just blindly, you know, do this and then just ignore me. And when they do ignore me, I know it is because I'm supposed to realize something without them telling me. So when they're not talking and you're frustrated, it's because for mine, you know, I don't know, you can ask your own, but for mine it is because I'm supposed to see something for myself. And so it's more like turn on your spidey eyes, like start paying more attention, start redirecting your energy instead of, you know, explain, tell me what what is going on. Uh, start trying to understand the lesson being shown to you. And so that is a part of the thing. Oh, but when I, so when I had asked the kids, because I know I'm going to, uh, I know some big changes are coming into mine. I know the where my sale is headed towards. And so, um, you know, when I was sitting there thinking, well, you know, I know I'm not going to live anywhere year round. That's not my intention, but that, um, you know, I was thinking, you know, should I have a little farm place like by my kids and go visit and then I could turn it into a business and then they could live there and I could turn it in. They could have their friends come there and stay, you know, could turn it into a whole little community. And, um, and then when I asked them, you know, neither of them, they were like, hell no. And so I was like, okay, so that's not the direction I'm supposed to go. So, uh, you know, that's fine. And then one of my daughters even said, um, you can look into, there's lots of communes and stuff. You can go find that. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm okay. I've got my own thing going on. It is just, you know, and I, I needed to, that closure for myself to see that's not the direction I'm supposed to go. And, um, so anyways, it just gives me, you know, new insight. It isn't like I'm not going to get upset or mad or something. You know, everybody has their own directions to go. I just need it for my own internal is to be able to close the door, to not have that where I was putting any energy of, you know, of possibilities or something. So um, uh, I'm trying not to really look too much into the stuff. Like a lot of the stuff, what they show me is a lot further ahead way further down the road and it's always just like little clips um of just like a split second and i can always just see like joy and connection and so that is always you know the driving force of how that is going to be really um cool the the connection and the love and stuff but the um uh, but i don't know all of the things that they, you know are going to get me there i just have to trust daily you have to trust every day and that, that is the crossing the tunnel with no light you know the only light you see is the light you provide for yourself of where you feel you're directing your energy to go and and it's all based on what your soul is your connection to your soul is what you're learning about and learning how to uh you know be more directed as a soul. I mean, we got all these people here, you know, their whole idea of being a soul is sitting at someone's feet who tells them that if they don't do what they say, they'll burn in hell forever. And uh, they want to just sit at that guy's feet and sing for eternity. Like you see where people's minds are, like why this development has to occur. I mean, that's their spiritual that's their, that's their spirit. They're like that's, that's all my spirit. My no, just wants to sit at the feet of the superior being and sing to him all day. It's like, hey, man, my soul's got, fuck, it's got things to do. I got places to go. I got things, experiences to have. I got things to grow and learn and know about. So yeah, I've got time to sit at somebody's feet and sing. And uh, so, um, but you know, is a part of the soul development. And that's why it's just like, it's got to be 
you know, life after life of being trapped in here, something, because it just really boggles my mind because I don't, I really don't believe that these are just like new souls. I believe that it is a true thing to come to uh, the university of earth. It is very difficult. And, um, and the souls that come in to go through the process it is a uh, challenging. I don't think these are just like new souls. These are souls that are advanced souls. And I don't know what happened uh, to how everybody got so trapped here. And but it's the darkness is inside each person and they've tapped too much into their darkness and the dark energy that is around it is like they, they've even created more dark energy. And so the dark energy that's being purged out and purged out of all the people and stuff. But, you know, it's, it's, they've gone, they've leaned too far in to their dark side. And it's kind of like this, this reality gave them permission. And so some souls came in to experience that, to lean into that dark side, because there's a lot of lessons to learn. And all these things, like no matter how bizarre and weird and, stuff everything has lessons whether the soul you know uses them or you know has to go to life review after life review after life review you know i mean as the big challenge is that you know in the qhht things in the past life regressions is that a lot of people it takes a lot of lives to work out one thing and so that is why you know it's a big big thing big undertaking right now you're trying to work out a lot of things. You're trying to really see a lot of things. You're really trying to get to the core of you, you know, and it to me is done through, you know, meditation and the connection to oneself and the development of one's uh, relationship with our guides. You got to understand, you got to learn the, the trust these beings that are guiding you. And so many people think like, well, my guides are trying, they're out to get me and stuff like that. No. No, 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 try and keep in mind, this is their higher vibration. They are not, and they don't have an emotional stake, like how you feel emotionally burdened. That's why I say to them, you I know, mean, when I get into a, 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 an argument with them or whatever, I'll say, you know, you know, this is, this is very hard because of the emotions they burden you. They're very difficult to get over. And that is why it's a mastery. To learn to master your emotions, to master the mind, it is, uh, it's a development, it is very difficult, and so it is um, a huge undertaking, and yeah, there's a lot of people who are just watching us, because it is a lot to do, and so, you know, while you are in, in this process of developing yourself, just really um, take time to yourself, you know, get to know your guides. Go out and walk around out with them and talk, you know, have conversations. Don't just assume you're talking to yourself. As one thing too, where they said people who talk to themselves are more intelligent. It's because you're not talking to yourself. You're well, I mean, some people think they are. Uh, I know I'm not. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just as fortunate enough to know that I'm not talking to myself. I don't care how many fucking people come and tell me that I'm motherfucking talking to myself. I'm not talking to myself. I don't know how to tell myself things I don't know. It's impossible. So, and believe you me, I talk about shit I don't fucking know. I don't know it until it comes in my mouth. And there's a lot of things that I go and I say that I don't even know I said them. I'll go back and I'll listen to something. I haven't had time in a while to listen to any of my recordings. But when I used to have more time and I would go in and I would listen. And I would, um, I would always just be like, what? What was I even talking about? And so, um, I know I'm not talking to myself and, you know, I'm, I don't care if my kids think, you know, even after, if my kids come and just keep saying, you know, I'm a crazy person and I talk to myself and I'm, you know, that to me is someone's own, uh, spiritual, uh, retardation. Their, their spiritual slowness because they uh, aren't developed enough to be in communication with their guides to 
understand that you have other beings talking and like like i said and it's a it's an all-day event and it is like uh um it, it, it just reminds me i don't know why i have starship enterprise it's just stuck in my head all the time now and seeing them walking around and the, the main thing and uh captain kirk that would be my higher self would be the captain kirk and then it was the uh all the other ones and then they'll chime in and say stuff and sometimes they'll try and direct you to look at something else and you gotta catch with your discernment and go no no I'm, no I'm not giving that time I'm not giving that energy no I'm not gonna even go there with that you know you gotta catch it you gotta say no no thank you and um and they'll shut up it, you know but if you don't catch them they'll sit there and chatter and chatter and chatter and that's why you got to learn how to quiet the noise in your head and learn how to manage it. And so it's, you know, it's a huge process. And it is, but this is what this time is about. This time is about the advancement of the being. And there's a big a celebration at the end, you know, the age of Aquarius where everything is, um, as I think, there will be, you know, I, I, there's going to continue to be people that will fall out. You know, it's going to be, a, there will be a big change. Like when the poles shift, when things switch to go the other way, that will be the the great awakening. That's what I always think of that as. That's the great awakening. That's when things flip and go right side up. And everybody who was comfortable in the upside down, living their darkest life, they're going to become very uncomfortable because then they're going to see and the, the, the spiritual aspect of life is going to become so hyper clear. They're going to feel dirty. They're going to feel shame. They're going to feel gross about themselves. And so that is going to be their healing journey. And, and that can be uh, stuff from a lot of different lives. That's why I said that these things bumper up. So it's things of experiences they're trying to process from other lives. And so they want to go through the most horrible, impactful thing here to bring forth the pain from these other deeper experiences so that they can release them to move forward. But there will be people who will be going through the process and it will be so burdensome that they won't be able to complete it. So once the awakening happens and things are going, that's when we're going to go in this deep healing. And that is going to be very profound and very provocative. It's going to be very, um, uh, that to me is what brings on the solar flash is uh, this, uh, this thing. And, and um, there's a thing going around where they're saying, that, you know, it could be months with no power and the no power uh, for months, I mean, that could be during this period of time. So if, if, it, if the pole shift happens and reality happens, but see, to me, there has to be this part where we're see, seeing the truth. And then we know during the summer, there's going to be like trials and stuff, tribulations, tri uh, tribunals, they've already been going on. And so they're supposedly going to be showing this footage and we're to the thing, like, uh, you know, there's all these, um, things being said, like we're, we're at the time where things are going to go down. Things are going to switch. The truth will be seen. It's being leaked out all around us. And, uh, but it's going to be a boom when it goes. And, um, but it's going to take down the government, the internet, the money, all of that stuff. And so I don't know if that is going to be a period of time that we're going to be with nothing but ourselves and um, in the information. And that will be a part of the process. Yesterday when I went to the store, I got, I, it was weird too, because, you know, I know everything is falling apart and there keeps being, you know, a weird thing after weird thing. So you can't expect when you are, have something going wrong to be like, oh my God, you know, everything's going to be going wrong. And so um, when I got to the grocery store, you know, and I got there to pay, all of a sudden all their things crashed. And so, um, nothing would work. Nobody knew how to run the cards. Nobody knew how to do it the old fashioned way. They were completely lost. They're going from machine to machine. The line's getting bigger. We got all these people now who have, uh, half paid because we've got our shit rang up. But now we just are all holding, well, no, no, they have the receipts. 
we're all just sitting there waiting um, to take our stuff. And, and But they can't get the money out of our accounts. So uh, the whole thing, uh, it was like chaos. And then uh, the owner came and he wrote down my number and I just left. So I don't, I don't know. I, I started seeing people come out. So I don't know if they were going up and down. I don't know if they could take cash, but they couldn't take cards. So I'm in, you know, inside me, I'm like, hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck those banks. I even said to the owner guy when he was writing my card number down, I said, yeah, well, maybe the banks are crashing right now. He goes, yeah, well, if so, there's nothing we can do about it. And I said, yep, yeah, exactly. There's nothing we can do. Everybody's got to find peace. And, um, but if that goes down and then we have to go through that period of not having this stuff and, uh, but when we goes back up, see, we're going to be quantum and it's going to be everything. And so I just don't know how long it's going to stay down and, um, and where people are saying it's going to be months and I just don't know, um, you know, it, it all, the same way everything has been moving slowly, it's going to still be like that through, uh, even if, if we all of a sudden start becoming abundant and start having a lot of money coming into our reality, that um, it is your energy is heading into the thing, but the overall energy of the environment still won't be like that age of Aquarius. It won't be like that until it people move through their healing and get to that space of um, non-judgment and appreciation, appreciating life and all that stuff. And when they get through that, and then um, the uh, uh, when we start seeing communities really start to develop and people really going into that energy of creating through love and compassion, that's when we'll know. We're, uh, we're, we're here. We're here. We, uh, we're in it now. We don't have to stress out. We don't have to worry. We can just relax and experience. So once we get to that, until we get to the part where we, uh, the peace is an overall feeling on the planet, once we get there, but we just got to keep in mind that, you know, even if it is happening for each individual, that you're finding peace in yourself. And we still have the, the group the collective experience. And so what I'm really hoping though, because of how long my healing has taken, is that the people have been doing a lot of healing. It's the flipping upside down. It's the assault on the ego for all these people that is going to be the big, uh, a shocking, eye-opening experience. Oh man, I can't believe I only been talking 47 minutes. I thought that's surely gotta be a couple hours. Now she's up, up and going. <clears throat> uh, so... Uh, anyways, the, the, um, the shock of, um, the, man, I may, I may just uh, do this one. I may come back and do another one because when she starts doing that. And uh, sometimes I feel like I see that she doesn't have discernment over the energies when the energies push her to be distracting and, you know, irritate me, like wake me up when I'm sleeping and stuff like that. I know it's not her. I know it's um, interference. So, um, hold on. I'll just let her out real quick. Hold on. <clears throat> Hopefully, she'll stay out for a little. But, um, anyways, uh, so the... Um, the energy, it, I'm hoping that this is, um, that that's mostly what is going to be being worked on, that they've been healing and other things. But one thing too, is like how these people, uh, sit there and tell people, um, is such a big movement of, um, it, it's so irritating how that now all of a sudden it is like, uh, MAGA is bad and Trump is a uh, Satan and all this. Yeah, oh my gosh. Right when we start getting to a part where things are going to go good, it's like all these people's fears and their, uh, I don't know, attachment to demons. I don't know what the hell with these people. It's so strange to me why everything is. And I, I've been this way since I was a kid. 
I mean, my mom would constantly, oh, the demons and devils and stuff. And I'd always be like, I don't believe that. I don't believe there's a devil. Well, you better believe there's a devil and uh, demons and all that stuff. I'm like, I don't believe in devils and demons and that stuff. That seems like monsters under the bed kind of stuff to me. So um, I believe in, yeah, dark energy. And, but I believe a conscious energy is, um, uh, you know, is more of a creator than it is, uh, you know, wants to be a parasite. That's not conscious energy. That's a energy as a energy looking for a host because it has no identity. So conscious energy has its own uh, ability to create. <coughs> oh my God, that... Oh my God, that was like a sword. <coughs> Fuck them. <coughs> that hurt. <coughs> that was a weird feeling. <coughs> oh my God, that hurt. So that's what I think that, um, <coughs> I wouldn't give dark energy a, <coughs> oh my God, I would give dark energy a name and a title. Fuck them. Yeah. They are, um. Um, <clears throat> but you know, to me, that is the, the fear, <clears throat> the giving that energy more, more energy than it deserves it is the, um, person in fear is the creator of the thing that they fear. So, um, <clears throat> it is the, um, that is a, the same thing as the, uh, man, my, my voice is crackly. That is the same thing as, um, look, uh, that's the same thing as, um, um, I, mean, I can't think of what it was the same thing as, uh, man, an interference. Uh, I guess you're not allowed to say there's no devils and demons. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, we're in the, we've got a lot of darkness around us, so that's for sure. <clears throat> it's purging itself out, purging itself out of people all over the place. Um, you know, just down. so many weird things that people are, keep doing. Um, uh, but you know, that's the darkness inside them and they don't know what to do with it. And so... Uh, you know, somebody does something or says something and it, they just lose their minds. Oh, uh, yeah, guys, it's about the mind control. Yeah, because it is a different, their mind is being controlled outside of themselves, not inside of themselves. But in order to control your mind inside of yourself, you have to break free from the, the, the illusion, the distractions, the 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 3d um you know it's like the the, the lights uh what is that what they would always be about the um uh people would be distracted by the the lights in hollywood what was that or vegas or whatever like uh, people would you know follow towards uh that light of um corruption and greed and stuff which you know I, i'm i think one thing about the quincy jones which is pretty fascinating let's get all our attention on jamie fox everybody listen when jamie fox you know let's all be concerned and worried about what jamie fox has got going on and then all of a sudden jamie fox starts talking and woof, boy he's got lots to say doesn't he so now it's like, well, was all that just to get us to start paying attention to what Jamie Foxx had to say? Is he really sick? I hope not. But um, 
you know, hopefully all these people, it's just, we got to get the med beds. And that's another thing. Where does that fit in? And that those are going to be things that are going to change us into, uh, you know, when we don't die, like people are going to live very differently when they're not in fear of everything, not in fear of touching somebody, not in fear of sickness, not in fear of, you know, when people get this idea that they're in control of something is they've got to be in fear of it so they can control it. When you have, don't control life and death, you don't control destiny. It's, it's uh, got its own thing. It does what it wants to do. And it, you were okay with it. You signed up for it. And so you came into the experience. You just can't remember because you have the frayed uh, communication with your uh, soul, your higher self. And so it is um, those wounds that need to be mended so that you can reconnect to your heart, reconnect to your soul. And, and all of the things that are, this is what this time is all about is all for and so uh, that's why i'm really hoping that if it is just that all these people are going to go through their ego thing but yeah all these people who keep saying like cut your family out like and saying that they're doing um clearing ancestry and stuff like that well that's not what my guys explain it as cutting those people out then you are trapping yourself into the 3d because you can't work it out with them in this life you have to come out and work in another life. You have to come back and work through that stuff still. It isn't. Um, uh, it, that, that isn't. Uh, in some people it may be a part of your process. It, you know that you need to cut people out for a while. I mean, you're so entangled with them. You're so codependent in the relationship. That you need to separate. And have space apart. And uh, But that doesn't mean. That that should be your your future goals is that's you know uh, my future goal is just to never have anything to do with this person again, so that I never have to experience any of the stuff that they you know bring up in me. But you, the thing is, you you want that stuff to be brought up in you, so that you can release it. So separating from these people so that they don't trigger you is uh, counterproductive to ascension. You know, that's, that's, you're binding you back, holding you back. It has to do with faith, fear, um, connection. It has to do with all these things. That's why I say everything that they show me, it's all connected. Everything is connected. It all goes together, but you have to find the connections for yourself. Like you'll see the connections for yourself, how you're supposed to see them. So, um, you know, today's the 22nd, so I don't know what all happened yesterday. Um, man, I know that there's a lot of shit going on. Like, a lot of people dying. And, uh, I mean, I just when they're sitting there worried about these five billionaires, 700 on that one boat. I don't know how many in Tulsa, but there's a lot of other places, a lot of other disasters and stuff happening. Another thing, too, is, um, you know, with Quincy Jones hiding himself. I mean, he he's not out there. Is he out there leading the way on the LGBTQs? You know, Will Smith, is he out there? Or is he masking and hiding and pretending he's someone else? So why are these people uh, pretending not to be gay? Why are these people who are rich and successful? If, if, the, if this organization is so valid and so important and your pride in your sexuality. Why are these people who have all the money? Why aren't they claiming their sexuality and putting it out there? So I, to me, it is kind of like they want to find that dark side of people to get them to go into this sexual. I, I can see now where um, during because I lived during the time where the older generation was fighting against the the gay the thing and um you know the 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 old straight people would say that is um perversion that is uh, you know you don't just go do perverted sex and so they looked at it very differently and then there was the group of people 
to me, the ones who were trying to stand strong were people who came in to um, change things because they fell in love with somebody of the same gender. And that's not the same. That's not perverted. That's love. So it, to me, it seems like the people in charge, they're all like really fetishy and perverted. And I mean, God, just see that fucking video with, um, what the hell douchebag fucking, I can't stand that guy. Um, uh, it's not fucking Kimmel. Can't stand him. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, the one that starts with an F. I used to like him when he was on Saturday Night Live. Uh, a couple of them, even uh, Seth. I used to like them. I don't. I think that they are probably just uh, figureheads too. All of those late night TV people. Um, but the one, Anderson Cooper, he's horrible. But the one I'm thinking, not John Stewart. Jo um, I can't think of his name. I can picture him. But if you see the video. And he's all painted. He's got this wall painted. And he's got this kid painted. It's very uh, 80s. Like 80s new wave kind of stuff. And um, they're painted. And they're singing. As, oh, what song is that? Because um, you could probably Google the song and find this footage. Uh, man, I can hear it. But I got to be able to hear it where I can pull it up. Um, uh, fuck, it is an 80s song, and, um, but anyways, the weirdo late night host is, um, up in this kid's face, making the kids sing it along with him, oh, God, uh, fuck, Ooh, it's so close, um, and you can see the kids totally terrorized. And there's also uh, footage. Oh, I think that one's Podesta. That one's Podesta, the the audio of the shower thing. But I, I was thinking it might have been this guy. Um, I think it's Podesta, the call me daddy. Call me daddy. Fucking video. This one's a sick name like that, though. Oh, was that one that he did on his show? No. No, because this kid is terrorized. I've just seen this footage so many times. But if you see it, oh, the song gets closer and closer. Oh, I can hear it so loud. It's so weird. That's such a weird phenomenon how you can hear something so loud. But you can't get it to transfer from hearing it into speaking it. It's weird. Um, but the... Oh, it's going to drive me crazy because I can hear it so loud. Um, but anyways, that, uh, the footage of the, um, what was I even talking about it for? Well, there are going to be more and more of this stuff. Somebody put together, made a whole book of the hunter, the, the, uh, they put it in photos. It's all a book. So it's got all of the emails written, all the pictures, everything. I would think that book would be X-rated. I want to see, like, that book would be illegal to own, I would think. <gasps> it's got, you know, the kitty, uh, what? So, if somebody did it, I want what, what's going to be done with it. But, and it's a whole book. So, uh, and, and then how did they even get all the stuff? Like, that, that, that shit is, you know, being done, like, by the NSA or something. And getting it leaked out. So, I don't know. I don't want to see that book. I know these people are cre creepy creatures. I know that they did horrible, horrible things. I mean, the, the, uh, it was 2020, I think. And the CCP president, or uh, was it CCP president? It was some, uh, no, it was a whistleblower. Uh, he came out. And now, hopefully, I didn't say that word to me. Um... A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Q, F, P. <laughs> uh, so, um, that he came out and said <clears throat> that if they didn't, um, it was, I think it was, that they had to make sure we all got these. But there was something else they were supposed to do, but that was a big one. 
and they were supposed to by the end of, uh, I thought it was the end of 2020, but maybe it was the end of 2021. I'm so confused on time anymore. And then, um, but he said that they have all the footage, every single pervy thing that every single politician or diplomat or um, rich person, billionaire came. They've got it all on footage. And they've got everything that Joe and um, Nancy, all of them have ever done. They've got it all. And they were going to release it if this certain thing wasn't done. I don't know what happened about all of that stuff. I mean, uh, that could have just been to get us to pay attention. But in that thing, uh, um, I heard that the... Um, <sighs> is kind of like like an unwritten uh, okay thing that they come over there in um these words torch er and um r a e e the uh, little kids there and that they are so uh, i think um they were talking in particular about uh, the Biden family, it seems like, was, I think it might have even been Hunter, I don't know, some of this footage, if you can even find it anymore, everything gets washed, but it was um, kind of like that they, uh, they've got such a lust for it, they enjoy it so much, and they do so, so much of it, and it is even disgusting to the, uh, the the people like it's it's gross the people who do it because the, the people like to do it so much they enjoy uh, that's what hostile that whole fucking thing was based on as soon as i saw that there was no question in my mind i knew that was real uh, i knew that was real uh, every uh, it's like i can see the most weirdest disgusting disturbing shit throughout my life and I would know if it was real or not. And that is all like internal guidance. It is, uh, you know, and I, you got to have internal guidance to not be tricked. I, mean, I knew these motherfuckers do this shit. I, man. And I think too, in the hand of God thing is the uh, people here having to start having their kids kidnapped and get their attention because this, um, you know, these people keep uh, sharing this 85,000 kids, 85,000 kids. There's way fucking more than 85,000 kids. Way more. You're talking about third world countries uh, that were created by man so that they could have a pool of people who were indigenous, who that they could uh, feed off of. And repress, oppress, enslave, and then, um, uh, you know, make them all poor, fight for one another, make sure you have the criminals, the instigators out there to create chaos and uh, depression and anxiety. And then, um, and they don't document. I bet you a hundred bucks. Like I've never had a kid in one of these places, but I bet you a hundred bucks. There's no documentation of so many kids. I bet they don't have birth certificates and shit like we do over here. So you just got all these kids, and they don't. And then uh, uh, they don't have birth control. So these people just have kid after kid after kid after kid. And um, it, but that's what they want. See? Oh my gosh! Here she comes. Hold on. Okay, so it is that's what they want is to have the um all these undocumented just free for all. So all of these like I just imagine how many people out there in these towns, you know, uh farmers and stuff having kids and stuff and you know, there's got kids going missing all the time and of course the police aren't going to help them. Nobody's going to help them. Nobody's going to do anything. And um, there's no way to track them. That's why they don't even track on the census and stuff about, um, 
indigenous women in this country. They don't, uh, it's, it's all about so that they can just take them and there's no count. So 85,000 is low, low ball number, I think. And um, anybody who thinks that, you know, well, what in the world would they do with them all? It's food. It's food. Like, that's what they do. They use the parts that they want and then they feed you the rest. So, yeah, there's a lot of consumption. So, as when people who are extremely obese, when they turn around and they figure out what they've been, you know, gluttoning up on, uh, there's going to be, uh, you know, there's going to be some really hard things that people are going to go through, uh, you know, uh, to see, uh, you know, what, what they were consuming, what they were becoming fat and happy on is someone else's pain and suffering. I wonder how much of that pain and suffering that has gone into that consumption of that energy where people say, well, you know, you're eating animals that were killed horribly. Well, what about conscious, you know, your same conscious beings who are tortured and stuff and then fed to you? I wonder how that energy does. So I wonder if that adds to depression, if that adds to people's confusion fuck if somebody is a simple minded and not attached to their spirit and uh you know who knows maybe the the dna of these different people are in there talking to you fuck i don't know i don't know like they always have that in movies and shit about the um you know it's like a, a the simple minded they are the ones who can be controlled and taken over. That's why they want the simple-minded. They don't want uh, people to be deep thinkers. They don't want people to think for themselves. They just want people to be controlled and easily to... Um, uh, it's just all about control. They just want easily controlled. Go with the trends. Do what they say. And that they're always changing that to me is a part of why these stupid changes keep happening right now. It's like just to show people like, oh, my God, they just changed this. Now they're changing this. Oh, they just changed that. Now they're changing this. It's just to see like how we've played along before. And so you put on the brakes and you take notice. And you're like, this is some bullshit. And that's what everybody is doing. But there's going to be the, the smack dab event thing. It's got to be close. Like, you know, and I don't know if, fuck, if this is Tulsa's big awakening. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's been so many of these uh, cities and states that have been such attack. So, um, anyways, I, you know, you just got to keep staying safe, but you got to keep connecting to yourself. You know, that's, to me, the most important thing is for the people to connect to their souls, to go in deeper so they can understand what they're doing here. Because what I'm doing here isn't the same as what everybody else is doing here. Everybody's got their own thing they're doing. And so I can tell what my guides tell me. I can share, you know, the information that they give me. Well, I mean, they want me to share it. I mean, that's kind of like they force me. Like, you know, like I said, when I first started doing this, it was like I was, didn't want to. I Even when I started trying two years before. And I was like, oh, but it wouldn't get out of my head. wouldn't get out of my head. There's nonstop. And I've got all my journals there. And um, my typewriter got all. And then it just wouldn't stop to the point, you know, turning on the light. And tell me, you know, get up and go talk. And even when I very first started, how nervous I was. So but now... It, it, um, and now I see, you know, I see what, why they want me to say this stuff. And, you know, because before in my normal life, I would have just taken it as my own personal guidance. Even when I've tried to share things, it's always like, what are you talking about? Nobody's talking in your head. You always say weird things. And so now, you know, sharing the stuff that they say 
I'm, you know, is beneficial to other people, but also I don't want to be distracting so um, as to not get people to understand that everybody has their own gu guidance that is very self-directed and they really do have your back. They really are trying to help you and bad things really happen for good things to occur. So, and don't think your guides are out to get you. And if they, and if you're trying to communicate and you're feeling like, well, they're not telling me anything, then it could be because they want you to see something for yourself. So get in mind that they are there for you, that they're, they're helping you and not even just your own guides and your grandparents and shit. You're, you've got the whole fucking galaxy, the whole universe. And we've got all sorts of beings around us that are out there trying to give guidance and stuff. But you've got to mend your your internet connection. This this interference that, that they've created between you and your guidance. Uh, because, you know, your guides are there. But it's something in here that creates this um, ability to not be able to hear them. Because I, I know everybody's got them. Everybody's got them. And everybody can hear them. They just can't hear them. Like the same way as I can hear that song, but I can't pull it forward. Like you have to realize there's someone in there talking, trying to guide you. But like I said, if you've got a lot of noise, you're not going to hear the whispers back here. They're not. The only time they're going to really scream at you is um when you're not listening and you're about to do something, you know, that's going to hurt you or something. And then, you know, they may scream at you or knock you down or something like that. But normally it is uh, very much a whisper. You yourself have to take the time to listen, to acknowledge, to give them time. Then you develop a relationship. You know, but you gotta you gotta put the effort in. You gotta put the time. You have to stop and listen. What are you saying? What are you trying to tell me? And what are you showing me? Well, you know, it's you who has to develop that. And it is hard. I'm not saying, you know, go down and do it. And you better be good at it by later today. It's just to keep in mind, you can do it. You will be able to do it. It just takes practice. And, um, you know, it's the drive. It's like, where are you setting your sails? you're setting your sails to connect to yourself and develop yourself, these things are going to happen. You are setting your sails in the direction of where you want to go. So anyways, I, I'm, um, I feel just like, uh, I don't know. It's like a mental exhaustion or something. I did see somebody else say that it feels like that they're, um, walking through some sort of density. And that's how I feel too. It's like, walking around in water or something and I wonder if that is something about is because everything is energy and plasma and stuff and is this density is changing if that is a part of it like is if us is as you lighten and you become lighter in this um, um matter this density and to try and move through it is heavy but see it's going to ch change to where the the lightness is going to feel good to us like it's going to feel like oh now i can fly i'm gonna float <laughs> and then um but the other ones then it's going to feel like it's off balance they're going to be feel very uncomfortable like they need to hold on to something they need to ground into something but that is pain and suffering and so the pain and suffering is going to be at their forefront. So it is going to be the only thing they're going to be able to face is themselves and their ego. And so anyways, that's going to be the great awakening. That's going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be beautiful and horrible all at the same time. And it's going to be um, magical once we get through it. And I can't say, you know, each person's own part they're going to play. But it's all about your connection to yourself. And so it's just in that process, just do everything you can to just keep connecting to yourself and becoming an independent, independent thinker, independent believer, 
and just, uh, you know, comfortable with who you are, not feeling like you need to be somebody different for somebody else. Cause that holds you back to the 3d. Cause then you got to go into the question why, you know, and it all has to do with that format. When you move up into the other, it's not the same questions. It's not the same experiences you move into like, like I said, now is uh, moving through the observation but then when you move into the other um, way of living, there is no, uh, like, you just can't carry the toxicity through. I, I've, I've said it so many times now, and so, and I'm getting a zillion messages, and it's distracting. And um, so, anyway, and I've had a headache for days, man. And it does feel dense and heavy, so... And I don't know when, you know, today's the 22nd, it's supposed to be some kind of thing. And so is the 23rd. Yesterday being the 21st and then the bank situation when I was at the grocery store. So I really do hope that a lot of the banks and shit, like I, I just want shit to start going. I'm so um, just tired of the this day-to-day -day just uh, dragging out because <clears throat> I've been, fuck, I've been going through this a long ass time, man. Fuck. I'll be so glad. So, anyways, I'm going to go, uh, uh, today's supposed to be hot and sunny here. And all of a sudden, the weather switched again. <laughs> it's a fucking cold front, freezing cold. You had to be out in your coat. And all of a sudden, it's supposed to go hot and sunny now for the next week, so... I guess maybe they didn't get the storm they wanted with the cold front they brought in to heat the other one. So now they're going to back it up with more heat. So just come back to back storms, I guess. And who knows? This whole thing is just exhausting. But just keep in mind what it, what it's all for it is for you to, you know, to figure out the direction you're going and to set your sails and to start paying attention to the crew. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.